Cate Jesus Christo. So Ronnie, would you interpret that please? Amen. Okay. God bless you, Ronnie. And, uh, Jesus. May you bless the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's true interpretation, amen. That, amen. That's true tongues, amen. That's a juicy right. tongue. We don't got uh, Pentecostal stuff, but we're praising the Lord. We thank you. I'm glad to be part of your family. It's just a blessing for me, and uh, I, I I had such a great time last year. And that's a matter of fact, the last year we uh, you arranged this, right? But lo and behold, I forgot. Sorry, Pastor, I forgot something. Because when I came to the pastor's fellowship, uh, pastor's telling me when I he uh, had me spend a night to his house because he knows I get real tired when I I'm not good at driving missionaries. I, I just I'm dead meat at, after the first hour in the venture. I, I'm out like a light. And going from here to Cleveland last time, preacher, it took me five stops. I slept five times, five times. I was just so tired on the roadside. But anyways, and he had me stay over to his home. And he says, "Now, oh, brother Lawrence, uh, you're gonna be at Gypsy Choir uh, next year in November." I said, "Preacher, I may have a church then to go to." <laughs> he goes, "Now, Lawrence, you promised me. Now, year, you promised me you'll be here." I said, "Preacher, you just you just right, you know. I'll cancel whatever it was if I did have anything." But praise Jesus that I didn't have any meetings then, but I would cancel regardless. Amen. <laughs> and uh, and something else, I didn't. I I forget how I'm supposed to preach. You know, today, tonight we we stop. We're going to just sing, and, and that's about it. But you know, uh, we have a model in our school the school that I graduated that a preacher is to preach. Amen. Amen. And season and out of season, and it's like out of the season, right? <laughs> support Brother Stevens and uh, missionary, missionary work does work, amen? Right. And how can I say that? Well, proof is in the pudding. Look at us. Amen. We are part of your giving. So we're sure what, you're, what you're doing, keep on doing it, amen? amen. Because it's working, amen? And uh, missionary giving, it, it's great. And you, know, you support Brother Stevens. We are the fruit of your work, Sally and I. Uh, uh, the work that came out of that, and I'm reaching gypsies for Jesus Christ. Amen. And I, uh, we're ex fortune tellers. We used to have the Thomas Free readings. Uh, Mrs. Sparrow knows all, sees all, and tells all. And, and one day God just broke our hearts through the word of God, and we examined ourselves, as the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, to examine yourself. And we brought those, uh, we brought our, uh, our crystal balls and our tarot cards, and we just laid it to the altar. Amen. Amen. We're a pretty good giving, amen. So, and, uh, for those that are not aware of that, I know I said that before, that in those words, and uh, now you support me. Amen. You took me on, I think, preacher, you, you, you didn't tell me this, but I have a funny feeling you took us on as soon as before we got here, or when we walked right through that door, you just the late eye and said, I'm taking these four cups in. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been feeding us since then, he got <laughs> And, uh, and by, by you supporting us, and I'm just going to give a brief testimony, and you know, forgive me, I, I go on and on and on, and I babble, and sometimes I forget to introduce my wife or people that are with me, and people get on my case, so I forget what I, I didn't forget this time. Sally, this is my wife Sally, and she's my better half, and uh, this is Ron and Ann Miller, can you stand? And uh, this is out of our ministry too, Ron and Ann Miller. Ron and Ann Miller had a fortune telling parlor in downtown Cleveland. And they took their signs down for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now they run a legitimate roofing business. Praise the Lord. Very profitable. And uh, also, uh, Michael and Maria, would you stand please too? This is Ron and Ann Miller's son and his wife Maria. And uh, I said, I'm going to say something else now to give a testimony. I said, when, when you started taking me out for support, well, we've been winning souls for Christ Amen. since that time. And one of them is Maria. Amen. Amen. Maria accepted Amen. Jesus Christ four months ago back, Maria? Yeah. Four months ago yeah. back in our kitchen. Sally led the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Maria has been growing in these months miraculously for the glory of God. And now this, she wants to follow Christ and believers' baptism. Yeah. Why am I reading on? She's part of your giving. Right. She's added unto heaven, unto your account. Amen. And I just want to thank you. I know Maria, if she can, she'll say thank you for giving to the Lord. Amen. Right. Well, I know you didn't come to hear me just go on and on and on. Oh, we had an eight-year anniversary. <laughs> now, I'm not buying time. I just want you to know that. I'm not buying time. We had an eight-year anniversary last night. 
We took the bed until about 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, we didn't party. We just had a good time with the Lord Jesus Christ. An eight-year anniversary of the Cleveland Baptist Church, we had how many people around it? 79 gypsies showed up. And guess who was the speaker? Brother Steve. Amen. Yes, Amen. Right. So you can speak Just ask me. But Brother Stevens came and he, and he spoke. And it was just a marvelous time in the Lord. Amen. And we just said, uh, you take part. Though you was not there, you take part in that ministry. Right. Eight years mm. at the Church Baptist Church. Amen. And not to mention the Cookville Baptist Church that we also run Sunday evening at 8 o'clock. And when we come to hear, we've come to hear the Word of God. And why would we come? To see what God would have us to do. Amen. 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 That's why you come to church. And uh, you can see what God have, what God would have you to do at home. Amen, Pastor? Right. God's all over. Amen. He's, he's all over in one place. But we've come united together. To see what God would have us to do as a body of believers. Amen. And I do believe as the title of the message I'm about to give to you is winning the world for Christ. Amen. That's what God would have us to do. Amen. Is to win the world for Christ. It's simple. It's simple as ABC. It's simple as a nose before your face. That's how simple it is. Winning the world for Christ. Where do I, I get this? My title from it. The scripture is Mark chapter 5, 16. Let's all turn there. Let's just, you read silently as I read it out loud. I know we all know the scripture, but let's just read it for the sake of reading it. Amen. Mark chapter 16, verses 15. Winning the world for Christ. It's so beautiful here to hear the pages of, of the Bible, to hear the description. It's so, such a beautiful sound to our ears, isn't it? Amen. Right. Mark chapter 15, or 16, <coughs> verses 15. We'll read the scripture, and we'll bow for a word of prayer as God's blessing upon the message. And he said unto them, speaking of Jesus, Go ye into all the world and, and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Let's say it again. Let me say it again. And he said unto them, and let these words sink in within your heart, so and mind. And he said unto them, speaking of Jesus, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. I'm going to put something in here. And Jesus said unto them, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every gypsy, Amen. to every Filipino, Amen. to every Mexican, Amen. to every Colombian, to every Russian. Amen. And preach the gospel. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Ask God's blessing upon the message. And you pray for him that God may anoint me tonight and give me his power of preaching. Father, we come before thee in Jesus' precious name, dear Father. Oh, dear God, I need your strength tonight. I need your help tonight. You know my frail body what it is, Father, and how weak it is, Father. <coughs> I cannot go on my own, and I don't want to go on my own, dear Lord. I need your Holy Spirit's strength from on high. As you power, power the apostles in the upper room, Lord, and the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit power I need tonight to preach your word, O oh, Father. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary, dear Jesus, for I do not want to be seen tonight. I want you to be seen. <coughs> Help me say the things I should say and the things that I should not say, dear God, may be left undone. Father, if there's someone here that's lost and do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, I pray.
pray, dear God, even now, Father, that you tug upon their hearts by thy Holy Spirit and draw them unto thee, Father. If there's a Christian, Father, that's hurting, oh dear God, that has troubles, and that I have not given their burden to you, Father, I pray tonight that they cast their burden upon you, for you care for them. Father, I pray, dear God, that you bring the strongholds of the devil down, Father. Amen. I pray, dear God, that there be a hedge of protection around this church, Father, and the devil will not have his way, Father. Bless all that we do tonight. For the preaching, to the singing, to the testimonies, Father, may they all give glory to you. For we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Winning the world for Christ. That is our point. That is why we have missionary conferences, amen, amen. is winning the world for Christ. This is why we turn out the lights. Is winning the world for Christ. This is why we unlock the back doors. Is to win the world for Christ. This is why we send missionaries in four corners of the world. Is to reach the world for Christ. Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. Is winning the world for Christ. God has not, I do not believe that the Lord has put us upon this planet just to strive through it and live the best we can and that's all we're living for. I do not believe that was God's intention whatsoever. Right. It was to bring salvation to men through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That was God's plan and it has not changed from day one for the book of Genesis. Amen. Amen. It has not changed. We are to win the world for Christ. Jesus said, go to all the world and preach the gospel. We had five missionaries. May I say this? Five missionaries last year. Was it five? Here. It was seven. Oh, it was mistaken. <coughs> and if I do, may say, I think, Pastor, if I have heard correctly, has taken all those missionaries on. Why? Because he has a vision. Reaching the world for Christ. Amen. The Lord Jesus has given an order. And that was commissioned by him. And he says, now listen Christians. I want you to reach the world for Christ. This is your duty. Is to reach the world for Christ. He has given us a commission in order by him. We are to reach the world for Christ. Now I'm going to repeat that reach the world for Christ because I want it to really seek in tonight. We reaching the world for Christ, the Bible says, is a wise thing to do. Amen. It's wise to reach the world for Christ. Amen. Yes, Jesus has gone to all the world and preached the gospel. And we are to be what? We are to be his witness. Amen. He has no other witness. Tell me, besides the born again believer, does Jesus Christ have another witness besides the Bible? We are his witnesses. Right. Uh, what are we to witness? Is the question. What do you witness as a born again believer? Is the question. We are to be His witnesses. Amen. The book of Acts, let's all turn there. The book of Acts chapter 1, let me prove it to you. Many are not aware of this, many are. The book of Acts chapter 1, verses 8. <laughs> and Jesus says, when ye shall receive power, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be what? Ye shall be sent out, church, and ye shall be what? Witnesses. Say it again, and ye shall be witnesses. Witnesses. Amen. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. What you have before you 
is in the uttermost part of the earth. These missionaries right. that are reaching. We are to win the world for Christ. This is why we have fellowship dinners and, and the banquet dinners and so forth and so on. Is to win the world for Christ. Are we winning the world for Christ? Are we doing all what Jesus has called us to do? Let me tell you something. We're on a short span here, church. Right. Our time is coming, amen? Right. We're going home soon. Right. What are we doing until that time does come? Are we doing all that's in our need that we could do in winning the world for Christ? What should we be a witness as the Bible says? Jesus said that ye shall be my witnesses. What should we be a witness of Jesus? His death, His burial, and His resurrection. Amen. Yes, the Lord has given us a message. And this message is to every born again believer, every Christian that has been redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to preach the message of joy, the joy of the cross, the joy of His mercy, the joy of His forgiveness. We are to preach. Amen. I, uh, I jotted this down and uh, I just... There's a couple points that I'm going to share with you. And just number one is winning souls for Christ is wise. Amen. You want to be wise as a Christian? Let me tell you something. What the Bible says winning souls for Christ is wise. Amen. A wise Christian will win souls. Oh, brother Lawrence, please tell me. Well, let's all turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 30. And I want you to read that too. You read silently as I read it. And I want you all to get there. Say a hearty amen when everyone's got there. Amen. Amen. There's not enough amen. There's more people than those few amen. 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 Okay. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. And the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And listen to this. He that when it souls is wise, you want to be a wise Christian, then you better start winning souls. Amen? Amen. Amen. Nobody wants to be a fool. The Bible says he that wins souls is wise. Yeah. Winning souls is wise in the eyes of God. You know, it, it, it's great and, uh, to reach the four corners of the world. It's fantastic. You're reaching north from here in Cleveland, Ohio. And I thank you so much for that. You're reaching out there, north of us in Cleveland. Through us, you're reaching. But you know, we got a Jerusalem here. Right. An old backyard. Amen? Amen. Right. An old backyard, we got a little Jerusalem here. You know what that little Jerusalem is called? Lancaster, Ohio. <coughs> right. It's called. Ask yourself the question When is the last time I led somebody to Jesus? In my Jerusalem. Amen. When is the last time I testified of Jesus in my Jerusalem? Amen. When is the last time I gave a track to someone in my Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. Now, you got to think about it. It's between you and God. <clears throat> Not between you and me. It's between you and God. you got to think about it. When's the last time you led somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ and they got saved? If you got to think about it, then something's wrong. Something's wrong. Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Jesus says, ye shall be my witnesses. Amen. When's the last time he was a witness for Jesus Christ? <coughs> we have a Jerusalem out there. Right. It's our own backyard. We are to witness for Christ. Yes, when's the last time we passed out a track? I remember the last missionary conference. We almost got arrested because we were passing out tracks up here. That dear brother back there over there. Dear brother, I forgot your name. I'm so sorry. But we almost got arrested. Passing out tracks in our Jerusalem. Amen. We need that Russian missionary. Get a Russian missionary to support. Amen. 
When was the last time we passed the track for Jesus? We need to win souls because it is a commandment. Right. God has given us a commandment. That's why you're here tonight. Amen. I, I hope that's why you're here. If you're lost, I hope you're here. You can say it. Amen. Yeah. But we are to win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ for the hour coming when no man shall preach or teach no more. Right. We need to win souls. The Bible says it's wise. For, you want to be wise, Christian, tonight? Start winning souls for Jesus. Start winning souls. Yeah. Preaching the gospel in all the world. We are to preach because God is not willing that any should perish. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord, the Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slackness, but is long-suffering. Aren't you glad that God is long-suffering? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that He's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Amen. We are to preach because God is not willing that any should perish. Right. Amen? Right. And you know what that perish means? In a place called hell that person will be if he doesn't get saved. Perish where the devil is going to be one day. Number two. First, number one, we need winning the world for Christ is uh, winning souls is wise, number one. And number two, it's like a two-point message. We need to search our souls. Amen? Yeah, right. We need to do some searching tonight. What would God have us to do with these missionaries here? Where would He direct us? <coughs> We're winning the world for Christ. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that a man should examine himself. We need to examine ourselves. And you know, Pastor, I always said this, and, and I, I love this church, and, and I don't mean nothing. You all are great people, and I really love you dearly, but I've been in churches where they're very cold. Very, very cold. And it said that passage, you know the temperature of the church. How's that? When the invitation is given, the altar's empty. There's one or two maybe hanging on to the altar for life. One or two. You can tell the spiritual temperature of the church when the pastor gives the invitation. Let a man examine himself. We were in Romania and uh, several times and the people just held on to every word as we preached lips into the, the gospel. And they were three deep. And they didn't have these padded pews like we have or this padded altar, such an elaborate altar, comfortable, it's easy to set on, it's easy to bend on, and, and you don't hurt yourself. And they didn't have that. They had rocks and, and boards that are falling through the floor. And they were three deep. Three deep. Praying to Jesus. Yes, many came to get saved. <coughs> and many were saved, but they came Amen. to pray for others. Amen. Because you know why? It's the prayer that moves the hand of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Reaching the world for Christ. The Bible says it's wise for a Christian. It's the book of Proverbs. We start giving wise. Amen. Number two, we need to search our souls, examine ourselves. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus is not willing that any should perish. Right. But all should come to repent of their blood. Right. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You know, I forgot when I started, but I think we got 15 minutes left. And uh, I don't know if I'm your end, your last preacher or first preacher, I don't know, but I'm going to throw it out anyways. Conclusion. Conclude with this. Jesus says, we we're to preach the gospel in all the world to every creature. Amen. Now, this is a mission-minded church, I know. How, oh, Brother Evans, do you know this is a mission-minded church? Tell me, Brother, how can you tell this is a mission-minded church? Well, simple, as soon as you walk through the floor here, if you're coming from the way out here, look to your right and you'll see the photos of the missions. Amen. This is a mission-minded church. We're praising the Lord for that. But winning the world for Christ, we need to send people out Amen. to preach the gospel. Well, Brother Evans, you prove it to me. 
where the Bible says that we need to send people out. Well, I'm glad you asked. Romans chapter 10, verses, verses 14 and 15. Amen. Listen to what the Word of God says in reaching the world for Christ. Now let me remind the church, this is your reasonable duty. Right. You're not being asked something that's beyond you. Jesus says, this is your reasonable duty, is to reach the world for Christ. He's not asking anything else, except you live like a Christian, but is to reach the world for Christ. And how are we to reach the world for Christ? Well, Romans tells us how we can do it. Romans chapter 10, verses 14 to 15. And how, and how then shall they call on him who they not believe? And how shall they believe on him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Reaching the world for Christ needs a preacher. Right. Amen? Amen. Verses 15. And how should they preach? Except they be sent. That is written. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings to, to, of all good things. Do you know what his missionaries do? We bring glad tidings to all good things. We preach the gospel to every creature. You're, sending, you're supporting me once a month and I'm preaching the gospel to every creature that across, crosses my path. We are to preach the gospel. We need to send them out, the Bible says. How should they hear? Be Amen. And in order to preach and to reach, we need to send. We need to send missionaries to, Philippi, uh, to, Philipp to the Filipinos, to the Russians, Colum Colombians, and Mexicans, and wherever we need to send, we need to send. Amen. One must go, the Bible says. What is our duty as a missionary? What is your duty as a church? Number one, we need to evangelize. Amen. Evangelize the world for Christ. Number two, we are to educate. Now I'm going to throw this out. Evangelize. Well, what are we to evangelize? John chapter 3, verse 3. For God so loved the world that He gave His only John 3.16, I'm sorry. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him shall not perish, but have it blessed. We're Amen. to preach that God sent Jesus into this world. Now let me tell you something. And this is where we give invitation, not a gross invitation. If you're lost here today, I'm here to evangelize. Amen. I'm here to evangelize. The Bible says, there is no other way to heaven except through Jesus Christ our Lord. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man can up to the Father, but by me, Jesus says, those are the words of Jesus. You need a reservation to get into heaven. Your name has to be written in the book of life. The last book of life. Now let me tell you something, church. If your name is not written in that last book of life, then you cannot pay that tax bill. You will not collect two hundred dollars. You can't get into heaven. Right. How many ever been a reservation someplace in a hotel, and the reservation has made a mistake, and your name was not your name was not in the book. You don't have a room reserve. It happened to me. It's an awful feeling, church. I want you to know. You're lost. You don't know where to go. Oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You know. But just imagine the feeling in heaven. Well, your name be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You cannot pass go, you cannot collect two hundred dollars. You need Jesus to get you into heaven. Right. If you're lost here today, don't know Jesus Christ, then you have time today to come forward and call upon Jesus to save you. Amen. Amen. Right. Me and Brother Stevens went to Budapest. I used the illustration before, and we waited in line at the the, the, uh, the uh, immigration thing, you go right through. And I'll be honest with you, I got scared. I'm like 6,000 miles away from home. And like, what well, well, happens if you don't let us in? What are we going to do then, Brother Stevens? But I went past through, we had to show our passport, preacher. Without that passport, preacher, we were not allowed to go to the movie right. Let me tell you today, lost person. If you don't have the passport of Christ, 
My Bible tells me you can't go in. Right. right. But let me tell you something. This past was available for you today. Uh, what is it, maybe five or ten years? We gotta renew this passport, this early passport that we carry to go from country to country, but this passport, you don't have to renew. Amen. It's paid for, amen? Once and for all. There's no renew on this passport. Right. I'm pleading with you tonight. Don't let the devil have his way with you. Right. Don't let Satan take over you. Bible says you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. How am I going to become born again? <coughs> Tell me. Number one, recognize that you're a sinner. For all I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Number two, repent of your sin. And number three, receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. But as many as received Him, to then give you power to be become the sons of God. If you're lost, you need to come forward and take the pastor's hand or take a, a deacon's hand or elder's hand and say, lead me to this Jesus. I want that passport. I want my name reserved in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Pastor? Never head bowed, every eye.